Welcome to The Point. We're so glad that you guys are here, that you come to spend the evening with us, kind of check out what we're doing here and what this is all about. Uh, I'll just give another introduction quickly of myself. My name is Ross Breitkreitz. Uh, and I still actually feel fairly new to the valley. Uh, I moved here, I know you're probably all looking at my name, it sounds exactly how it looks, right? I'm aware, it's a mouthful. Um, but I moved to the valley about two years ago, and what brought me to the valley was actually a complete stranger, a random woman, stalked me on social media, wouldn't take no for an answer, couldn't get the hint that I was giving her the cold shoulder, and now we're married. Yeah. All right, yeah. So, so point number one in my sermon this evening is, ladies, shoot your shot. Slide into those DMs because my marriage is living proof that it can work out. Just make sure he's not a complete dud and that he loves Jesus, and then we'll figure out the rest from there, okay? But don't be scared. You can talk to my wife. She can give you some tips afterwards. So I've been here in the Valley for about two years, and uh, actually a bulk of that time I have been serving as a pastor here at Duncan Pentecostal Church. I know the mall are like, oh, you shouldn't be responsible for any part of church, right? Like, is this like the, the recovery guy who's coming to speak to us tonight? No, I'm actually associate pastor here at the church. Quite enjoy my position, and I'm very excited to be speaking to you guys because I, uh, I consider myself to be a pretty big Bible guy, okay? big fan of the Bible prior to moving to the island, actually, I toured Canada with a speaking event that I had called Seven Mile Story, where I took audiences through the entire Bible in one night so that they could sit there and encounter the seamless story that is in God's Word, just the unbroken narrative from creation to resurrection all in one evening. And I do that because I believe there is something, no matter what, okay, so many faces in here that I don't know, so I will say this. No matter what you believe or think about the Bible, you may be sitting here tonight, you may be like, oh, I'm not quite sure. The jury is still out. You might not share my firm belief in what scripture says, but I still believe with all of my heart, there is something so tangible, so practical, so applicable to our lives here today, now and tonight, always and forever in God's word. And it is my hope that that will be something that you walk away with tonight and this evening. So I'm very excited to share. And so since, as I've already explained to you, I have a fabulous habit of taking a very short sermon and making it very, very long. Uh, we're going to dive into our topic this evening right away, which is looking at and exploring the question of where do we belong? Where do we belong? Where do, if you want to personalize it, where do I belong? Or another way you could word it is where do I or where do we fit in? And like, that is a pretty big question, I think. It's a really big question. And I've been thinking about it for a while now. And as I've thought about this question of where do you know, we belong, I've kind of decided that I think there's really two avenues and roads that we could take in answering this question, okay? I think we could cover it in a, a really broad way, right? Just kind of talking globally about like where we kind of fit in, and then we could narrow it down and maybe speak about more specifically uh, where we belong as it pertains to tonight. And so those are the two ways I want to try and tackle this question this evening, is first looking at full scale, large scale, stepping back, let's look at the globe, and let's look at what God's word has to tell us about where you, me, and I will even say the entire human race, where we have been created to belong, and where we truly will and ultimately are meant and designed to fit in. And then I want to look at this place and how that will pour out into our lives in the here and now and even to perhaps where we are called to belong tonight and this evening. So uh, when it comes to belonging, you may, when you first heard that question, where do I belong? There's a good chance you may have started answering that question in your head in like a number of different ways, right? Possibly you're like, well, I have my friend group that I fit in, right? I have this this pocket of people, I may even have like a place where I fit in, where I belong. I belong with my family, right? Maybe you were thinking that way. I know that for myself, uh, back in the day when I was probably your age, I would have said, hey, I fit in with the hockey team. 
I am a hockey player, and I gotta tell you, not exactly proudly, I was as stereotypical as they get. Okay? Like, I walked the walk, and I talked the talk when it came to hockey players. So, if you ever wanted to have a discussion about just having, like, Sick lettuce, silky mitts, sweet hands, dangling, going top cheese, bar down, five hole, Wheeland Tanners, getting after it with the boys. I could have talked about that stuff with you all night long. Now some of you are probably sitting there and be like, was he just speaking Egyptian? Um, no, hockey players, if you didn't know, kind of have their own language. And so that was where I ultimately felt like, hey, like I belong there. But you know what? I don't want to be, I'm not talking about those little pocket places and spaces where we feel like we belong. I want to get into God's word right now and take a look at where I believe he has called all of us to belong and where we are called to fit in. So to start off, I'm going to put it very, very simply. It's going to come off my tongue and you're going to think, this isn't new. I've heard this every time I've basically been to a church service, but that doesn't make it less true. Okay, I'm going to tell you right out one sentence. Where do you belong? You belong in relationship with Jesus Christ. You belong in a relationship with God. That is where we have been created to belong. And I believe tonight, no matter what you believe about the Bible, there are things that the Bible tells us in Genesis about the way God had created us and what he intended us for, that even if you're like, I don't know if I fully believe this because the Bible says it, I believe that in your heart, your body, your soul, and your mind has been communicating and affirming the truths of Scripture, even if you didn't recognize it or not. And the first thing, one of the first things, I should say, that the Bible tells us about how we were made and where we belong and how we are made to belong in relationship with this, it comes out of the fact that Scripture tells us that we have been made in the image of God. We have been made in the image of God, and now there is so many things that come out of this statement in the Bible. So many truth statements that will apply to our lives. But the main one I want to hone in on tonight is this. Is the fact that when the Bible tells us that, that we have been made in the image of God and then made into be a relationship with Him, it is communicating this, that at our very core of who we are, everyone, we are created to be very relational beings. Relationship and the desire for relationship is essential to humanity. And whether you believe that that is a, comes from the Bible or not, you felt that. You have felt that need, that hunger, that longing, that desire to find your people, right? To fit in, to have your BFF, right? Who doesn't love their bestie? Anyone got a bestie here tonight? That better be for me, girl. <laughs> that hat better be for me. We're going to talk later. Uh, well, then I don't have one either here tonight. Um, but we are. We are made, designed, and intended to our very core be hungry for relationship. And this is true across all time for all of humanity. That is why, did you know, one of the most horrific forms of torture someone can ever be exposed to is complete isolation. Because we are relational beings, designed, created, and intended to be in relationship, ultimately with God, but then also with one another. The Bible tells us from in the beginning that we are made, we belong in relationship with God. That is where we are meant to be. But here's what it also tells us, is that sin has come and broken that relationship. So now this sucks, right? Because if scripture's true, which I believe it is, the very thing that we have been created for, we have now been separated from. Right? It's like, kind of, I don't know if you've ever heard the analogy, it's like a vehicle that is built to run on gas and we can never ever get to the gas station on our own. 
right? So you might be able to limp that car around, you might get a buddy like push it down the street, but it is never gonna run to its full measure in its full capacity until it gets what it is designed to drive that engine in it. And this is kind of what scripture is telling us that we are designed to be in relationship with God. And I firmly believe that if we are honest with ourselves, we sense that on some level our hunger and our need for relationship. It's why relationships hurt so bad. It's why they have the ability to sting, is because we hunger to experience and live and exist inside that perfect, unbroken one that can only ultimately ever be found in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Your body has been telling you this all along and just affirming what the scripture is telling us. That's where you belong. The second point that I wanna say is this, if you are familiar with the Genesis account of creation, God creates man and women, and then he takes them and he places them inside a place called the Garden of Eden. And I wanna tell you this, you are designed and you belong in that garden. You were intended, you were designed to be in that garden. How many of you have ever tried to picture the Garden of Eden? One, two, there we go, that's better, right? Did it look a lot like a scene from Avatar in your head? That's what it looked like for me, right? It just looked like this, like over the top, I can barely wrap my head around it, world and place and space of beauty. And I pictured lots of mountains and a lake. Uh, sorry, ocean people. I don't like the salt. I like freshwater lakes. The salt is a little much for me. I'm sorry, okay? I probably burned some bridges in. But that's how I always pictured the garden. But this is what the Bible tells us. God takes men and women and he places them inside this garden, which is where he is communicating, this is where I have designed you to belong. Now, the garden may have been beautiful, it may have been spectacular, but what we need to understand is that the greatest part about this garden was not its topography. It was the fact that it represented a place where we sat, rested, lived, and walked in. Perfect, unbroken relationship with our Creator. Perfect, unbroken relationship with the one we are created to be in relationship for. This is a perfect place. Now, I want to ask you, how many of you have ever tried to picture in your life a perfect world? Or a perfect place? Or even like world peace? Have you ever stopped and tried to like think about that? Yeah? I have. I just want to say something. We're going to talk about this here in a second. I'm going to explain why, but that's not a pipe dream. There is a part of every single one of us, I believe, in this room tonight that just like our emotions, just like our draw and our desire and our longing to be in relationship, there is an innate sense built into the fiber of who we all are from the day of creation that a part of us identifies, knows, and longs for that garden. And we know it. Even if we didn't know, we knew. And here's why I say that. We're going to need to talk about pain just for a little bit, okay? And I'm getting to a point here, so just bear with me. But first of all, I want to talk about physical pain. Because on its most simple, its most basic, its most foundational level, here's what physical pain does. It communicates a truth. It communicates a truth to us, and that is this. Something is not functioning the way it's intended to. Okay? If I snap a bone in my leg, I may not like physically be able to see the damage, right? But I can feel it. And the ouch, the pain that I'm feeling in that moment, it is sending a message to me telling me, hey, there's something in this general area that is no longer the way that it's supposed to be. So you're experiencing pain and discomfort as a result of brokenness. That is what physical pain does. There is a message underneath the ouch. The pain is communicating a message. And so, can we all agree with that? Like, that's true. And the thing of it is, is that the same truth about the message pain is communicating to us physically, it also applies to our pain emotionally. Now, I don't know about you, but personally, I spent most of my life not going that extra level. 
When I felt my emotional pain, I just thought it just means ouch. It just means I'm sad. It just means I'm lonely. It just means I'm hurt. It just means I have longing. It just means I'm scared. All of these things. But the truth is, our emotional pain communicates a greater truth exactly like our physical pain. And it's the exact same truth. It's that something is not functioning the way that it's designed to that you are not experiencing what you have been intended to feel. So I firmly believe with all my heart, and I believe if you are honest tonight, you stop and you think about it, you can't help but agree that all of those times in your life when you're hurt, when you're broken, when you're sad, when you're lonely, when you're rejected, when you've been cheated on, when you've been lied to, all of those times, if you have ever in your life felt those emotions, those gross ones, that inner emotional pain where it seems like it's clinging to you like oil that you can't get off and your only prayer would be that I wish I never had to feel this and you're sitting there and you're crying and you're going, this feels foreign, this feels wrong, I wish I didn't have to feel this way. I am telling you, your body feels like that not because that is a pie in the sky pipe dream but because your soul is communicating to you this is foreign and wrong because it is. Because my creator never made me to feel this in the first place. You aren't feeling pain. You are feeling homesickness. Every single one of us in here at some point in another, I believe, has experienced emotional pain where your body was saying, I miss that garden that my creator has told me I have been intended to live in. I gotta tell you, I never wanted this more than in a season of my life where my mom was sick and the doctors didn't end up being able to tell us what it was. She spent one month in the cancer clinic in Vancouver. She had more doctors and specialists look at her than I can even shake a stick at. And at the end of it, they just sent her back to our house and they said, we can't say it's cancer. We also can't say it's not cancer. If it is cancer, it's on like the molecular level that is so far beyond what science is capable of doing. So she's palliative, take her home, keep her comfortable, but she's going to die soon. And I've never wanted that garden more than during those months where my dad and I basically kept my mom in a drug-induced coma just so she could deal with this pain. I never wanted that garden more than the day I sat, stood beside her in that hospital room and I held her hand as she took her very last breath on this earth. And I sat there and the pain that I felt wasn't just sadness for the sake of sadness. It was my body recognizing that we were never intended to experience this because where we belong has always meant to be that garden. This is where God tells us we belong. This has been, always been in relationship with him and then in this pure, spotless garden. This is where you're called to be. Now, unfortunately, we, we don't get to walk in the fullness of that, right? We're, we're acutely aware, each and every single one of us this evening, that that's great, I want that place, but like we're clearly not there yet. But that's what we celebrate. Like if you're a Christian, this is what we're celebrating. This is what our Lord says he's going to return, return for. This is what he's going to restore. This is what we look forward to walking into for all of eternity. Is this perfect place? And even greater than that is this reunited, unbroken relationship with our Savior. This is where we are headed because this is where we belong. This is where God has called us to and is calling us to. This is the very core of where all of us are called to be. Now, like I said, unfortunately, we don't get to feel the fullness of that all right now. But I will say is if you're here and you don't know Jesus, you can take step one and you can at least step into having that renewed relationship with your creator again. You can have it right now, tonight. Because that is exactly why Jesus came, why he died and bled on the cross and he rose again and overcame Satan's sin and death and everything that found its 
breath of life, I would say, in the garden because of our sin. Where it all started, Jesus came, he conquered it all, and because of that, we can have that renewed relationship with the Lord. You could have it right now, this evening. God is calling us all the time back to these places where we belong. That's who you are. You are a person who was created by him and for him. And you need to know this because it can be scary if you don't have a firm identity, if you truly don't know where you belong, where you fit in and who you are, you run the risk of being tossed to and fro by society, by social media, by your friends, by all of these influences. You need to anchor yourself on the truth of who Scripture tells you you are. And if you have come to the Lord, and you are a son, and you are a daughter of the King, that means you belong in a relationship that affirms for you that you are beloved, and you are chosen, and you are called, and you are sealed, and you are delivered, and you have hope, and you have purpose, and you are worth it. This is the relationship, ultimately, that Scripture tells us we belong and we are called to walk into. And when you know this, you can now carry that confidence and that relationship with Jesus into every and every single avenue in your life. He will never leave you. He will never abandon you. There's not a place that he doesn't want to journey into with you in your life. I had to learn that through hockey. I, I had a point where when I was just like a baby Christian, I literally thought those were two separate things. I didn't understand it because I hadn't grown in my understanding of who Jesus truly is. And I have this is an absolute horrifying story to share with you. I had been at church in the morning, and then I went to a hockey game in the evening, and I had maybe just a slight little case of potty mouth. And my coach goes, Ross, didn't you go to church this morning? And I said, that's church, this is hockey. Those are two different things. I was that dumb. You can laugh. I was that dumb. But when we truly know who we truly are, where we truly belong, and the fact that our Savior truly, genuinely wants to journey with us into everything and everywhere, there is no place he won't go with us and there's no place we can't take him. And he used that knowledge to completely flip my hockey and redeem it for me in one of the most glorious ways ever made me enjoy the game more than I ever had before. If you're here tonight, well, before we get ready to wrap up, I just, I want to share one quick C.S. Lewis quote because he really does word this whole view on, on how we feel about this earth at times. He puts it more clearly and perfectly than I ever could. And this is what he says. He says, if I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. I think once again, this is something we can all identify, right? I bet you have, at one point or another in your life, had a feeling inside that you're like, something outside of this place. There has to be something better than this in order to fill this. And the Bible tells us that's in relationship with Jesus, and ultimately that's going to be in his restored kingdom when he returns one day. Our bodies have been affirming this all along. We don't belong here. And as I get ready to close, I just want to say, not only do we not just belong here on this earth, I want to speak to you tonight right where you are. And I want, maybe there's someone in this room, someone here who needs to hear this. Maybe you need to go and tell this to a friend. You don't belong where you might feel you're stuck right now. There may be places and spaces in your life right now where you feel stuck, where you feel trapped, where you feel like you've been caged. Maybe an area of, of sin or weakness or whatever it is. And I want to tell you that you don't need to stay there anymore. That you don't belong in that place. And God wants to call you out of that this evening. I'm telling you this because I've been there. I have been in those places. I've been in those seasons where I have maybe not just about face turned and ran from the Lord, but I've slipped. I've wavered. I've wandered. I've started to forget where I truly belong, whose I really am, and he has had to call me back again and again. And I want you to know that if there is a place 
you are right now in your heart, in your mind, and you feel lost there, God wants to call you out of that back to where you belong. And that is into his tender arms, back into his mercy, back into that deep relationship with him that you may have tasted once before. Because i got to tell you, that has always been the invitation that has brought me home again. It has never been in those seasons the accusations. It has never been, do this, Ross. Don't do that, Ross. Be better, Ross. Don't be so stupid, Ross. It has never been scorn and shame and accusations. It has always been that gentle, sweet reminder from my Savior of how tender he loves me, how deep his relationship and desire is for me. That has been what has drawn me home every single time. And I am here tonight to tell you that if you feel you are stuck somewhere, you don't belong there. Your Savior is calling you home tonight. He loves you. He has not forsaken you. He has not turned his back on you. You belong in relationship with him. I'm going to invite the worship team uh, to start making their way back on stage. But as they do, uh, I just want to give you guys an opportunity to respond. Like I said, I don't know where you are all at this evening. And maybe you have drifted into that place and drifted into a space. And maybe it's just been a pocket season and you're like, I just, I just want out. Guys, I've been there. And I want you to use tonight, I want you to use this moment, use this opportunity to accept a helping hand. There might be someone next to you who'd be happy to pray for you. I'm gonna be up here. I will pray over someone who wants to come and have someone pray with them. Use this song just to re-surrender your life to the Lord, to come back and say, Lord, I have forgotten. I'm so sorry. I've gotten distracted. Remind me of where I belong, and that is in his arms. I want to use this song as an opportunity for each and every single one of us to do that this evening. So, I just want to invite you to just close your eyes, bow your heads. I am going to end with some prayer right now, and then we're going to hand it over to the worship team, and we're going to praise our King this evening. Lord Jesus, I come before you right now. I thank you for every single person who is seated in this room tonight, Lord God. And I also thank you for the truth of your scripture. I thank you for the fact that you made us for relationship with you, that you intended us to originally be in this perfect garden. And then I thank you, Lord God, that even though we are foolish and even though sin has ruined your perfect creation, Lord God, you have said, I will never abandon you. And you came running after us and you provided a way when no one else could, Lord God. And then you continue to do it again and again. So for those hearts in this room right now who need help out of a pit, out of a season, Lord God, will you resurrect? Will you breathe life back into those places and spaces? And will you remind us all where we belong and where that is, is in your arms. We pray these things in your name. Amen.